methylphenidates. So let's start with the race mix mixture of methylphenidates. So 50% dex and levomethylphenidate. So first there's just the instant release, which is Ritalin or methylin, and that has a duration of action of three to six hours. Then there's Ritalin SR, Ritalin sustained release. This just has a waxy coating that's dissolved in the gut, which is relatively inconsistent, but does extend the duration of action to about four to eight hours. Then there's also Metadate ER, which also contains a wax-based matrix and has a similar duration of action of four to eight hours. Then there are the methylphenidate medications that use the beads. So there's Ritalin LA, Ritalin long acting. So this is a capsule that contains 50% instant release beads and 50% enteric coated delayed release beads. Then there's also Metadate CD, which contains 30% instant release beads and 70% extended release beads. So the duration of the Ritalin one is six to nine hours, and then the duration of the Metadate is about eight to nine hours. All right, so then the next medication is Concerta. So this uses a fancy delivery system called Oros, which is the osmotic controlled release oral delivery system. So it has an outer coating with a semi-permeable membrane and a small laser drilled hole. And then it has an inner core that contains the methylphenidate and an osmotic salt. So this will make no sense to you, but as it moves through the digestive system, water from the body is absorbed through the laser hole into the core, which creates a pressure gradient and pushes the methylphenidate through the laser hole. I have no idea. It makes no sense. I just like that it has lasers. So this provides a steady and gradual release of the methylphenidate in the blood. Typically has a duration of action of about 12 hours. Then there are two of the newer ones, which are Adhancia XR and Aptensio XR. So for Adhancia, think enhances the duration of action. For Aptensio, think pick up the tempo. So Adhancia XR uses the multi-layered beads. It's got 20% instant release beads and then 80% controlled release beads and has a really long duration of action of 13 to 16 hours. Like I said, enhances the duration of action. Then there's Aptensio XR, which is composed of 40% immediate release layer and then 60% controlled release layer. And this has a quicker onset of action than Concerta. So it picks up the tempo and then has a similar duration of action of 12 hours. All right, then for the methylphenidates, there's a lot of the ones that we reviewed in the last video. So there's Quillichu ER, which is an extended release chewable tablet with a duration of action of typically eight hours. Then there's Quillivant XR, which is a liquid that contains 20% instant release and 80% extended release. Then there's Cotempla XRODT, which is just an orally dissolving tablet that lasts 12 hours. Then there's the Daytrona patch, which lasts about nine to 12 hours. And it's nice as it avoids first pass metabolism in the gut. Then there's a fancy medication called Jorne PM. So it has a unique extended release technology. It's mostly for kids who have a tough time taking medications in the morning. So you take the medication at night and it's not until the morning that it starts to act. So it's not until it hits the colon that the methylphenidate is released. So it passes through the upper GI system completely intact. So 50% of the drug is gradually released between 10 to 14 hours after dosing. And then 50% of the drug is gradually released over 14 and 20 hours after dosing. Because it's got to get all the way to the colon, in the ad it says it's not dependent on any single factor like pH or variations in the GI transit. All right, now we're moving on to the dexmethylphenidate formulations. So the first is just the immediate release dexmethylphenidate, which is called Focalin. It has a duration of action of three to six hours. Then there's Focalin XR, so it contains 50% of the instant release beads and 50% enteric coated delayed release beads, has a duration of action of eight to 12 hours. And then dexmethylphenidate has a prodrug. Remember how we learned how Vyvanse was a prodrug? But the one for dexmethylphenidate is a little bit confusing. So the prodrug is sir dexmethylphenidate. So it's just dexmethylphenidate with the amino acid serine attached to it. And it's not entirely clear how the serine gets cleaved. It seems to happen in the gut, but it's not as clear cut as Vyvanse. So sir dexmethylphenidate is a schedule four control drug, whereas all the other stimulants we've been talking about are a schedule two control drug. And this sounds great, but the issue is that we can't prescribe sir dexmethylphenidate on its own. It has a bad pharmacokinetic profile, so it's got a delayed onset of action. So it's not clear if we'll ever actually see it being used by itself. The only formulation that uses it is a medication called Asteres, 
So it contains 30% of immediate release dexmethylphenidate to make up for the delayed onset of action. And then 70% of the sur dexmethylphenidate. So that's nice and all that it's 70% schedule 4 drug, but the fact that it has any dexmethylphenidate means that it's a schedule 2 drug. So it kind of removes the advantage of being a pro drug in the first place. All right, and then it's worth noting that there are calculators that help you convert to the different medications. There's ADHDmedcalc.com. So this gives very rough estimations of dosing equivalents, but I hope as we've learned that there's different isomer mixtures and different release mechanisms, it's truly impossible to get a perfect conversion. All right, thanks for watching.